Now at 6, authorities announce an unidentified homicide victim from 1985 has links to the four states. Plus. to find out why when they already have one. I'm Anthony Saviello. More coming up. And visitors to the Web City Farmers Market can now enjoy an extra day. The four states most watched news starts now. We are still awaiting the start of a presidential news conference. We will go to it live when and if it begins. In the meantime, we'll go on with KOIM News at 6. The victim in an unsolved California murder from 1985 is now linked to Lamar, Missouri. Authorities have released a sketch of an unidentified woman whose skeletal remains were discovered in Newark, California back in 1985. They say she had been shot and killed up to a year before. She was between the ages of 25 and 36, was 5 foot 6 to 5 foot 8 inches tall, and had brown, red, or auburn hair. Now, DNA testing shows the victim was a descendant of a former Lamar, Missouri resident, Marion Marie Helms Thorburn Richardson, who was born in Lamar in 1932. Richardson is now deceased. Investigators say it's likely the victim was placed for adoption as an infant, possibly in the late 1940s. Investigators want to hear from anyone who has information about the adoption or the victim's identity. You can find much more about this case on KOIMnewsnow.com. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty for a first look at the weather. Well, of course, it turned out to be a little bit hotter for us today. Temperatures, most of us were into low to mid 90s across the region. We're still upper 80 southwest Missouri, 90 in Joplin, 91 in Miami, 94 Chanute, 95 in Independence. And we do have a heat index out there. It's mainly sitting into the mid 90s across the region. That's going to climb as well over the next couple of days. Watching some scattered thunderstorms popping up. These are in our northern counties, but we are going to have them scattered about mainly along north of I-44 as we go through the evening hours. Thunderstorm just to the west of Nevada and stretching over toward uh, just north of Stockton Lake. Some of these storms could be a little bit stronger, not anticipating much in the way of severe, but an isolated severe thunderstorm, definitely possible. So hit and miss next several hours, kind of a cluster rolling through later on tonight. Of course, we're going to be talking more about this and the heat here in just a bit. All right, we'll catch you in a few. The city of Lamar has begun drilling a second water well to help improve the town's water quality. KOIM's Anthony Saviello has more. Drilling the well provides several benefits. One's water quality, two is water flavor should improve, but also it lowers our treatment cost. It lowers the chemicals we have to put in to treat the water, lowering that cost and improving the water itself. This well being drilled in Lamar is a part of a bigger $3 million project. This is coming through state and federal funding uh, through the ARPA program. So the city's portion is about $600,000 whenever you look at both projects together. Um, we're also replacing water lines with this project. So, but we still think it's going to be a positive effect for our citizens. This secondary well will allow the current redundant water source of Lamar City Lake to no longer be necessary. We have to have a redundant water source to make sure we can provide our customers and our residents. Um, currently, we still are connected to the city lake and our goal is to move away from the lake and provide only well water. This drill uses air compression to dig into the ground. It is currently drilling at 50 feet an hour. The foam substance being ejected from the machine is what is used to bring the broken rock and dirt to the surface. Once it is all said and done, this well will be 1,200 feet deep. For reference, that's nearly the same height as the Empire State Building. Reporting in Lamar, Missouri, Anthony Saviello, KOAM News. Now, for residents who might be concerned about the water quality, the city does an annual quality report, which you can find on our website. Of course, that's koamnewsnow.com. A Southwest Missouri school now has a wheelchair accessible garden thanks to a donation of supplies and labor. The Oakview State School in Monette, Missouri serves students with severe disabilities. The Lowe's store there provided the materials and Lowe's employees assembled the garden on the campus this week. Fair season in the four states continues as the Jasper County Youth Fair gets into full swing in Carthage. The morning kicked off with a market steer show. 
Young exhibitors will also get a chance to show off their sheep and pigs. One exhibitor says the urge to show animals came from her siblings. My siblings actually, all my siblings did cows and I was always the one, the one that ran around doing all the things for them and I was like, well I want to do it and you guys can run around for me. Well now they're too old to run around and so I run around for myself. If you're interested in checking out the Jasper County Youth Fair, well, there is still time. That event runs through Saturday. You can now visit the Web City Farmers Market on Thursdays. Today and for the next three Thursdays, the market is open from 4 to 7 p.m. It has more than just fresh produce. The market also offers board games, free kids meals, and an opportunity for kids to dig into some fun in the kids' garden. For a $35 fee, you can also learn the art of flower arranging. The Thursday hours run only through August 1st, but the market is open every Tuesday from 4 to 7 p.m. through October 15th, and it's open every Saturday morning year-round. Kids in Miami got to learn about fire safety straight from the pros. That's coming up, and the Southeast Kansas Fire Department gets a financial boost from a nutty source. Again, we are waiting for the start of a presidential news conference that was scheduled to begin at 5.30 this evening. We do not know why it has been delayed, but of course, when and if it begins, we will go to it live. In the meantime, we'll move on with the 6 o'clock news. The Miami Public Library held an event today just for kids who want to grow up and become firefighters. The library hosted Adventure into Fire Safety for families and kids of all ages. It featured plenty of fire trucks and kids got to meet members of the Miami Fire Department as well as Fire Pup. To learn about nature and how we can preserve it, um, you know, because forest fires, um, just fires in general, they're just devastating. Um, so, you know, we have, we're going to have the local fire department here too as well. Um, so hopefully, you know, it won't just be um, something, you know, like, oh, okay, when you go camping, like these are measures you need to take. These are measures you need to take every day to keep you safe. The event also featured the BIA wildfire team with their equipment and a surprise visit from Smokey Bear himself. Nutella, the company known for its hazelnut spread, gifted the Galesburg, Kansas Fire Department with a $5,000 grant. The fire chief plans to use that money to replace an old fire hose. Arkansas Secretary of State John Thurston has rejected an abortion ballot initiative brought forward by the group Arkansas for Limited Government. The rejection comes just days after the group turned in more than 100,000 signatures to the office on July 5th. Lauren Spencer has the latest. We feel a bit dismayed and uh, disappointed and in some sense appalled uh, that that this process is uh, potentially being weaponized um, to make a political move against us. Jenny Diaz with Arkansans for Unlimited Government says a week ago they weren't even sure they were going to get enough signatures for their ballot initiative. Because of this incredible display of energy and action and resiliency from um, our volunteers, but also from Arkansas voters who decided to show up to sign, even if it was the very last day. It was absolutely tremendous. The Secretary of State's office says how they collected the signatures was not done correctly. The group reportedly did not turn in a document that identified paid petition workers versus volunteers or turn in a signed statement indicating the group's organizers had signed the state's referendum handbook. Diaz says it hurts, but they weren't necessarily surprised. And that is because this issue is so contentious and because the Arkansas state government has done everything within their power to uh, to ban abortion um, and to restrict access. We received multiple responses from various groups and leaders fighting against the amendment, calling this a win for the state. Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders said in response on X, today the far left prohibition crowd in Arkansas showed they are both immoral and incompetent. And the Family Council Action Committee said in a statement in part, quote, the amendment did not include any medical licensing or health and safety standards for abortion. Those are fatal flaws, and I am confident Arkansans would have rejected the amendment if it made it to the ballot. So what's next for the group? We are working to, um, to find a way to appeal that. We have seen time and time again that this is very much wanted, uh, a wanted policy from the Arkansans we've engaged with. 
um, which goes along with our, our polling that show that the majority of Arkansans believe abortion should be accessible in some circumstances. Again, we are waiting for the start of a presidential news conference. We're going to go to it live when and if it occurs. In the meantime, it looks like weather is next. Trucks seen a lot. Well, of course, heating up a bit for us today. Temperatures into low to mid 90s, depending on where you live. And of course, uh, we're going to get a few scattered thunderstorms as we go through the evening hours. Looks good right now. Here's a nice shot. Indigo Sky. No, not Indigo. Our Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex Tower Cam. Of course, downtown Joplin looking off toward the north and to the east. All right, it's Thursday. Drought tracker always comes out on Thursday. You can see still pretty good drought once you get from Wichita to Oklahoma City points westward. Ours has greatly improved over the past nine months, but we're still dry. Jasper County, Newton County, into parts of Berry County. So we still need that rain. We are going to pick up some scattered thunderstorms as we go through the evening hours. All right, upper 80s out to mid 90s once you get into our western counties. Looks okay if we go to 7th and Range Line. Sitting at 90, southerly winds at about 15 gusts at about 22 miles per hour and those winds are going to pick up a little bit as we go through the next couple days. All right, humidity has creeped up a bit. So dew point sitting in that 65 to 70 degree range, which eh, puts us kind of sticky, too muggy outside and that's going to stick around as well. All right, heat indices. It still feels like to your skin, mid 90s. These are going to creep up the next few days. Isolate thunderstorms this evening will slide back through the 80s into the 70s. Let's go outside. You can see a few thunderstorms getting going. These are in our northern counties, and this is where they're going to stay the next couple hours, but then we'll see some development a little bit farther toward the south. But a cluster of thunderstorms, Nevada, just north and also just east. In fact, let's zoom in. So here's I-49, Nevada up toward Rich Hill. Pretty good thunderstorm, little hail core just south of Rich Hill, spreads over toward El Dorado Springs. This is a weak wave that is dropping through, but if we go out toward the west, big ridge of high pressure is building in. That is going to really help us warm up or heat up even more over the next uh, several days. Let me take you through time. 8 p.m. hit and miss storms, mainly along and north of I-44. Scattered thunderstorms still along and north of I-44. It, we may get a low-grade severe storm or two, but most of these will produce some pretty heavy amounts of rain. So if you get stuck underneath one, you'll get a quick little downpour. Scattered thunderstorms continue. Here's midnight to 1 a.m. A little flare up again late tonight into tomorrow morning. So we'll start with a few thunderstorms, and then tomorrow afternoon looks pretty good. It's just going to be hot, high temps, mid-90s. Then again tomorrow night, late tomorrow night into Saturday morning, some scattered thunderstorms again, mainly north of I-44. By the noon hour on Saturday, they dissipate, and then it's hot and humid once again. Day planner on your Friday, 72 to start, 87 by noon. High temp, right around 94 degrees heat index, probably about 103-ish or so tomorrow. 96 Saturday, 99 Sunday, triple digit heat moving in Monday and Tuesday. Cold front with rain chances by the middle of next week. Triple digit heat is definitely one digit too many, Doug. Yes, absolutely. Thanks, Doug. We are still waiting for the start of that presidential news conference that was originally scheduled to begin at 530. We will go to it live if it occurs. Otherwise, sports is next. Chevy Pitt State Soccer continues to work hard in their inaugural season as a program. This morning, the team announced the addition of eight new transfers set to join the PSU women's soccer program. Well, here's a look at the newest members of Pitt State Soccer. Four of the eight newcomers are transfers from junior college programs. Starting off the list with Macy Clements, Adriana Delgado, and Dylan Ehe Gardner, Aviana Gonzalez, Sailor Jensen, Abby Light, Carson Lynch, and Abby Williams. Second half of Pitt State signing class all come from the transfer portal. The Gorillas will compete in their first exhibition match this August. 
Football player announced on Wednesday that she is headed to the next level. The 6'6 forward out of Webb City will continue her basketball career in the East Coast. Sammy Mancini out of Webb City announced on her social media platforms that she is committed to play ba college basketball at Providence University. Mancini spent her sophomore season with the Webb City Cardinals and she was selected to the 2023 first team all COC girls basketball team. And Mancini spent her junior season with Link Academy girls basketball and she still has one more year of eligibility remaining in her high school career. Well, the Joplin Outlaws still have a below 500 record with only four more weeks of the season remaining. Joplin opens up a four game road trip with the same team that they played against all week. So Joplin goes against the Fort Smith Marshals once again. The Outlaws are two and one when facing the Marshals on the road this season. Joplin has been in a slump, only winning one of their last seven games. First pitch in that one begins tonight at 7.05. Over to the Mink League, the Nevada Griffins continue their road trip. Nevada looks to snap a five-game losing streak as they take on the Sedalia Bombers. This game is scheduled for 7 p.m. tonight. We'll have a final score update from that one tonight at 10. Final note here, Indianapolis was picked to host the 2026 Final Four, but not only that, it will also host the 2026 Division II, Division III, and NIT Championship Games as part of its Final Four weekend. The Division II and Division III title games are scheduled for April 5th, and that will be held at Gamebridge Fieldhouse, the home of the NBA's Indiana Pacers. Well, that's your look for sports. We're back with more news after this.